Hey everybody, uh, just want to let you guys know, cookout went great, everything, I couldn't ask for a better birthday, no doubt, um, my granddaughter, I just wish I could just share this little girl with you, because man, she she's just a very special little girl, and uh, all that made her, all that meet her say the same thing. Uh, even all the doctors that she's been involved with all of her life. You know, there's just something about that little girl, you know. But, uh, just special. That God sent. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. And it, she's even made our family even tighter than what it ever was. I have no fear for my, my family even if, if something happens to me, my family will be tight until the last one standing. Guarantee it. And in any way, shape, or form, they will stand for each other and back each other. And that's a blessing. I'm telling you people, I, I am so blessed in this world. I just wish I would have realized it at a younger age. Because uh, things could have been a lot better for me. A lot better for me and a lot less heartache. If I would have realized it. But uh, like I said, I'm going to make this short. Just wanted to give everybody a big thumbs up for this, uh, this birthday. Because I loved it. I, I really did. And uh, I wish you guys knew my family. Because you would want to be a part of it. I, I guarantee it. But... Uh, I want to just say, you know, I, I'm sitting here uh, and I'm looking through some verses uh, in the Bible and everything from Luke to Matthew and a couple of different ones that they're not just verses I'm looking up. They're verses that people send to me and verses that uh, videos I watch and and stuff like that. But um, uh, these verses and, and, it, and it's just so amazing at how clear clearer the Bible gets the stronger your relationship with God and the Lord Jesus Christ gets because it, it, that allows you to understand what the words of God is you know the the word of God is that by, that book the Bible and you can't understand it without having Jesus in your heart and the Holy Spirit in your soul, people. you, There's no way. There's no way you can understand that book. That's why it's the best-selling book ever, all, all best-selling. There is no book that's ever matched it. It's been around for thousands of years. The, the, book, uh, the books in the Bible have been around for, th were written thousands of years ago. Not millions, not billions. People don't believe the lies because that's all it is. It's all bull crap. Uh, there is no, no, nobody can deny the Bible, the word of God. They, they can deny it, but all they come up with is theories. Nothing solid to prove it's wrong. Nothing solid. And I can prove it. The Holy Bible is built on bedrock, folk, folks. Bedrock. If you dig down far enough, I don't care where you're at, eventually you're going to hit bedrock and you're going to have to drill or dig or explode through it if you want to go any deeper. But that Holy Bible started at bedrock. It was built on bedrock. It was not built with nothing that you would build houses and stuff with today with wood. It wasn't built with a uh, particle board. It wasn't built with tar shingles. It wasn't built with um, roofing uh, nails and screws. It wasn't built with drywall, sheetrock, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't built on that. It was built on bedrock, and it was built with the strongest materials, brick, mortar, reinforced, whatever. There is none of the bull crap wood and all that involved. This is brick, mortar, stone, stuff that stands up 
for thousands of years, just like the pyramids. And most, hell, look at the churches, folks. Come, come to the northeast part of the United States and just look at the churches. They look like castles and stuff from damn uh, Europe and and all over. I mean, castles from anywhere, even Scotland, wherever. I, you know, I can show you many of them around here. They look like they're from the Middle Ages. But, uh, hell, where was I at? Let's see. Oh, I was saying, you know, the Bible, the Holy Bible, all the books, the uh, stories, the Word of God sits on bedrock, built on bedrock. People, you take this story of your ball earth flying through an empty vacuum of space, you take this whole heliocentric bull crap that they have told you. None of it, none of it goes past about the 1830s. Everything you're believing today, folks, is built on, it's not even built on dirt. It's not built on a mud. It's not built on sand. <laughs> Every, all this entire globe earth, heliocentric bullshit is built on a quicksand at best, but I would say water, and there's nothing for it to solid to stand on. And none of it, none of it goes much farther past the Civil War. None of it. There's, I think, um, let me see, I think it was either, I think it was evolution actually goes back to the 1830s, 1840s or something. And the Big Bang Theory is 1900s, like 1930s, folks. The Big Bang Theory is 1930. Big Bang Theory. 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 Theory, not real, nothing about it real, nothing about it been proven. And the dumbasses even came out last year and said, well, you know what? We found a star that go back 20 billion years farther than the Big Bang. Bill 20 billion years farther than the Big Bang, people. The Big Bang was what they claimed started everything. There was absolutely nothing. No planets, no Earth, no nothing, no sea, skies, nothing. And then all of a sudden there was a massive explosion. And then everything existed. The entire universe with gazillions and unlimited amounts of space, stars, suns, Planets, Earths, all this shit, people, humans, aliens, whatever. This whole Satanistic lie. Now, they say, or it wasn't now, they came, I think it was last year, the year before. It might have even go back as far as the year before. They found a star that they believe is so many billions of years, even older than the Big Bang theory. Then when they thought the Big Bang Theory started, people, that's because once you start telling lies, you got to keep telling more lies and more lies and more lies and more lies and more lies in order to cover your lie that you told from the beginning. That's why I tell you today, everything you believe about life is a lie and you all have fallen for it and you know what people there's really nothing I can do about it I mean they write songs about it you guys all chant the songs I hear you be bopping down the damn road fuck that bitch fuck that whore that's what I do for all my money fuck that bitch fuck that whore 
girl. That's what I do for all my money. I, it, it's worse than anything. You know, my parents, my parents told us rock and roll, that's evil, that's evil, that's evil. And yeah, compared to Elvis Presley, I mean, they called him the king of rock and roll. Come on. He was, uh, I can't even say he was king of rock and roll because rock and roll didn't even start till the damn 60s. Uh, mid to late 60s and run through the 70s. And then the 80s, hell, you started looking, you started getting into that acid rock and all that hard rock and I'm sorry, no. Rock and roll was from 60s to the 70s with your Van Halen, your ACDCs, your Molly Hatchet, your uh, Black Sabbath, your um, shit, I can't. It's been so long since I, Errol Smith, Van Halen, or I already said Van Halen. Uh, let's see. Um, Ozzy, Crazy Train. Now, let me tell you about Crazy Train. Crazy Train, the song Crazy Train, if I was at a party, I always had this song with me. Crazy Train was my song. If we was at a party or at, I was having a party or whatever, I had a tape, did something of that Crazy Train tape. It was my, uh, th not my theme song, I ain't going to say that, but it was kind of my thing at, at exactly midnight. I'd take control of whatever stereo system is at the party, and we put the damn crazy train on. And at the, you know, that beginning of that song, everybody just screaming, just get everybody going, you know. And believe me, I, I you know, yeah, we, I can tell you about bands that were local bands, and, and, um, I mean, I was into the early REO, REO Speedwagon before they became, uh, uh, what was that disco basically, but I didn't mind the disco either, man. I got into, I used to dance and stuff. <laughs> Believe me, disco dance people. I did hell. I skated. I was skating when, as a kid and we did the dance skates and I danced with girls on skates and stuff. I know, I know it doesn't sound mentally possible, but yeah, I was a child at one time too. But, uh, People, uh, to get back with what I was, I started this whole thing about. See, I go off, but uh, on subjects. The whole thing I'm saying, people, listen. The Bible is built on bedrock. Solid. Nothing's going to knock it down. Nothing's going to remove it. Nothing's going to take it away. Ever. You know, just like you guys, you know, the pyramids, come on, how easy. Yeah, you can go in there and with some dynamite or some missiles or a bomb, you can blow that thing up. But the Bible isn't built on that kind of bedrock. They've been trying to destroy the Bible since the beginning. And it still stands. So, it's built on bedrock. Everything you believe today is built on, be at best, quicksand. And if you don't believe me, just look into it, folks. Calm down, calm down. Just please look into it. Take your own time. Quit, quit putting everything you believe in onto somebody else to research and really understand. Because it says, Jesus told the disciples many times, my people will perish from the lack of knowledge. And if you're looking for knowledge from somebody else, then you don't have Jesus in your life because Jesus is knowledge. That's what that entire statement means. That entire verse means, the quote means, folks, Jesus said, my people will perish without the lack of, from the lack of knowledge. Because without knowledge, you are without Jesus. Jesus is knowledge. 
if Jesus is in your heart and the Holy Spirit's in your soul, you will not follow the leader. You, I don't mean follow the leader. You will not follow, to go along to get along. You will not just do what you're told because everybody's doing it. There's reasons why in the 60s and 70s they had songs, except maybe even in the 80s, about highway to hell, stairway to heaven. Now, which one of those two do you think the masses are going to follow? Do you think the masses are going to be running up a stairway? Or do you think the masses are going to be running down a highway? They wrote songs about it, folks. They do it every day. Listen to all this crap music. Not, I didn't say rap, just rap. I said crap music. Bitches and hoes, bitches and hoes, money, 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 fuck everybody, take, do what we, you wilt, all this, do what you wilt, do what you wilt. I love you guys, man. Whether you believe it or not, I, I, whether you know me or not, I look at you guys as as my as one of my kids almost, you know. I just want to protect you. I just want to protect you, man. Tornado's coming. Please. Get in the basement. Get in the basement with me. So we can protect ourselves. Love you guys, man. Man, look. Only way out of this is through Jesus Christ. You make no mistake, folks. God loves you, and so do I. Well, Tachi had a hell of a birthday this week. Or the last two days, man. It's been a two-day celebration, and, and I've had a hell of a day. A hell of a good two days. Please, guys. All hope is not lost. This isn't over. It's not over. You'll know when it's over. Believe me. Love you guys. Till next time.